What's up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in to Deuces Farms. This video is a continuation in our DWC series. So if you haven't checked out the previous video, make sure you go ahead and do that. That was episode one. And in that video, we actually talked about getting started and what equipment you actually needed. But for those that have already watched it, now it's time to go a little bit further. In this episode, episode two, we're going to be talking about setting up your system for the best grow conditions. We want to make sure that your conditions are optimal so you can get that in return with growth. Before we get started, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. Turn on the post notification bells. It's really going to help out the channel a lot. If you want to further support, you can head over to the Patreon link down below in the description, or you can buy merch. But without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm assuming you already got your system set up completely. You got everything configured. Um, if you haven't done that, so there's plenty of guides on how to do that. If you bought an already made system, you can literally just follow the manufacturer's instructions. Or if you plan on doing a DIY, I do have a DIY build for cloning and as well as like a full five gallon system on my channel. I'll make sure I tag that below in the description. So go ahead and check that out if you want to get some DIY stuff, save yourself some bucks. But now that you've got your system all together let's go ahead and talk about making that system the best it can be okay so first up let's talk about nutrients now i know there's a huge variety of nutrients there's so many companies out there like for instance you watch my youtube videos i started with general hydroponics and now i'm using athena right and i was probably gonna try out some other stuff too i love athena and i, I had success with uh, general hydroponics and this youtuber may use that that one may use this there's a huge variety out there the only thing i will tell you is to Make sure you get something water soluble. You don't want to be mixing you know, like something that you would top dress in soil and just throw that into your reservoir. Things are going to get gunked up. Things are going to get nasty. You're going to run into issues. You don't want that. You want something that's going to be water soluble. And what I mean by that is that you want it to be dissolvable. You want it to fully dissolve. You don't want it to separate and get gunky because if, you know, that gunk builds up on the roots or around the or in the air stones, you know, for one, you're going to start, you know, lack of oxygen. Root rot's going to act as that. Your plants are going to start dying just because of that gunk. You got some stuff that wasn't good. And that's not just your base nutrients. That's all your additives, anything, whether it's your calcium. You want something that's water soluble. You want all that stuff because you want it to mix well and you don't want it to separate. You don't want to have to fight those problems. And also with nutrients, like how much do you need? Well, that also depends because two milliliters of this bottle and two milliliters of this company's bottle, you know, they're totally different. They're going to give you two different EC or PPM readings. So, um, just go off. What I would say is just go off the feeding chart of those companies. Like for instance, Athena has their PDF. They have their feeding chart, what they recommend on their website and they have it light, medium, and heavy. And of course me, what I prefer is I start on the uh, light end. I mean, I, I suggest you do that with everything because I know some people are going to say like, Hey, and DWC, I'm sorry, I burped. I know some people are going to say in DWC, you're going to use a lot more nutrients. Well, I don't think so because your plants have access to the nutrients 24-7. They're in that reservoir. They can fluctuate and they can figure out. They always have that chance to feed. So I don't think that's true. You could definitely get by with a lot less, and that's what I would recommend. I would just say going on the lighter end. If this company recommends 5 milliliters, I would say go 3 milliliters instead. Just try it out at first. You know, go on the lighter end and then work your way up. If Because pl the plants are going to look good, right? And if they start to look like, oh, they need some more, give them some more. If they start to look like they need less, take away a little bit, you know, let them you just read your plants. You really want to read your plants and get to know your plants. That's what this is all going to come into play. As long as your plants look good, everything's good. And you could test stuff. You know, you try it out. Really document it and write all this stuff down so you know the next time you grow that cultivar strain, this is what it liked at this stage. Other than that, that's pretty much it for getting the PPM set up. Um, we'll dive into that later on in this series. We'll really start once you get the plants growing. We can talk about some issues you can run into that type of stuff. But for right now, as long as you just mix it up, got some good stuff, you're going to be good for the start. All right, now that you got your nutrients mixed up, let's talk about pH, okay? I'm going to be doing a video on pH, so I'm really going to get in-depth with that and why you shouldn't chase it and stuff like that, but I will dive into it in this video as well. But what pH is recommended? Well, a lot of people, most people are going to recommend between like 5.5, 6.2, 5.5 to 6.5, right? We, we can say that. Well, most people are going to agree that 5.8 is optimal. And, you know, with pH, you know, that, that's how your nutrients are absorbed. At 5 point, a pH of 5.9, this nutrient might be absorbed better. At 5.5, this one might be absorbed better. So, you know, there's going to be, it's going to, things are going to fluctuate depending on how your plant's feeding. And that's just how the plants work. But one thing I'll tell you is don't sit there and stress yourself up about the pH. pH it to 5.8 right away. That's what I always do. I get it at 5.8. And then from there, I'm not going to stress it. I put it, I feed it to my plants. The next day I'm going to come check it. Guess what? It's going to fluctuate. It's probably going to be at 6.2. And most people could be like, oh, it's got to be at, you, at first I was like, oh, it's got to be at 5.8. And you can sit there and stress yourself out and chase 5.8 all day. And the reason I say don't chase pH is because guess what? You hit it with the 5.8, you got your nutrients, you hit a 5.8, you give that to your plants. Guess what? The next day it's changing. 
we all know it. If you or some of you, a lot of you are beginners, so you don't know it yet. But you're gonna see the next day it could be at 6.2, right? And you can sit there and stress yourself out. That's what I did. At starting off, I was just like, oh, it has to be 5.8. And if you do that, you're constantly chasing 5.8. You could you can adjust your plants probably like three times throughout the day, two three times throughout the day, just because you're trying to make sure it stays at 5.8. And DWC, the plants are absorbing water rapidly. Like you can cut a leaf and you, it, the plant will bleed, like not actual blood, but it's going to be water, you know, dripping out because the plants are absorbing so much water. So, of course, things are going to uh, change pretty fast, you know, the, those changes because at certain pHs, you know, different nutrients are going to get absorbed better. And your plant knows that it knows what it wants. And that's why it's changing. If things are going up. That's great because less nutrients are in the reservoir now. The nutrients of water content is changing, right? And now your pH is going up. And then guess what? It hits a certain point, and then your, your plant is like, ah, I don't need any more nutrients. I'm going to dial it back. I am just want some water. I'll leave the nutrients in the reservoir, and it equals back out. So that's why that first day you're going to see like 6.2. So you're going to see a higher number. I'm not going to say the exact number, but you can see something like 6.2 or 6.3, 6.1. You can see some crazy stuff in there as long as it's not jumping up a whole like point, like you're not – going in there at 5.8 and come back next day it's at 8 okay something's definitely wrong but it's gonna change about 0.5 you know it's gonna change it's gonna go crazy but that's enough with the ph talk i'm gonna go more in depth with the actual video so it may already be posted check down the link below in the description or just subscribe to the channel turn on post notification bells all that stay tuned for that stuff but now let's talk about water changes and how often you should change your water uh people could say a lot of different things people could say you need to um one thing about it was i won't say you need to do any of these things. Like I won't say you need to change it every two days. I don't want to say you need to change it every week. I won't say you need to change it every two weeks. I will say that it's strongly recommended that you change it between weekly to bi-weekly. I change mine weekly. Sometimes I may change it after four or five days. It all depends. I'm constantly, you're going to constantly prep water with DWC. Um, but I would recommend is doing weekly because you want things to be clean. You want that water to stay clean. You want some new stuff coming in there all the time. That'll help with temperatures. That'll help with a lot of stuff doing water changes more frequently. But now, like I said, you don't need to do it because I made it through my whole first DWC grow. I probably changed the water, actually changed the water twice. Like actually changed it to where I like dumped all the water out, cleaned it a little bit twice. Um, a lot of times I was just retopping. Um, and that just, I ran into a lot of issues like that, uh, but I definitely made it to harvest. That's why I say you don't need to change it, but I would definitely highly recommend I'm not going to say you need to because I don't want to tell you what to do, but please just change it weekly or bi-weekly. You're going to save yourself so many problems and you're going to have a great grow. All right, now let's talk about water temperature and what temperature your water should be. Um, people are going to say different things, but what I will say is what I've had success with is between 65 and 72 degrees. Usually when I suppress 72, I run into you know those higher temps. I run into some issues with like root rot pathogens and whatnot, but some people may be able to go up to the excess of 80 and be fine. And some people may like, that's what they recommend is like, hey, as long as you don't pass 80, you're good. And a lot of factors come into play with that. You got a good pump. You got enough oxygen being supplied. Um, but as long as you're between about 65, 72, 75 degree, maybe if we're pushing it. But I'll say between 65 to 72, you're going to be good. Most people are going to agree that 68 degrees is optimal. And why this is so important is because you can run into those pathogens, root rot. You can run into a lot of nasty stuff with high temperatures. You want to avoid that at all costs. And I'm talking about water temp, especially like if you got your room at 68, that doesn't mean your buckets are at 68. You know, your buckets, you go, you got the lights on, you got all this equipment around them that produce heat, the air pump, the air stones, like it's all producing heat. So your room could be at 68 and your buckets can honestly be like 75, 80, just, just off of that. You don't know. So you need to be toning in. Don't care. The room temperature, as long as it's in the seventies, you're good. Worry about that water temperature and the cooler temps. The reason you want it, for one, if it's too high, like I said, you run into pathogens. If it's too low, well, too slow. Your plants are not going to grow. And I actually covered a video on how to cool it down. I got tons of different ways on that video. It'll be linked down below in the description. Also, somewhere in the channel. So go check that out if you run into some high temps. And the reason you're going to want cooler temps is that cooler water does tend to hold more dissolved oxygen as opposed to hot water. So that's going to come into play. It's going to be really beneficial to make sure you have a lot of oxygen, that optimal amount of oxygen aeration, so your plants can really thrive. At the end of the day, your plants need food. Food, water, sleep, I don't know, but they definitely need oxygen. They need to breathe. And to cap all that off, as long as you stay between 65 and 72 degrees, you're going to be just fine. And lastly, we'll talk about one more thing about your water. You can have all that stuff in line. You know, you want your oxygen. You want that cool water. You know, you want this EC. You want this PPM. You got, we, we talked about all that, right? But guess what? There's one thing that can go overlooked, and that's your water level. 
yes, the water needs to be filled up to a certain point. You know how, you know, soil, you could overwater or underwater. Same thing at DWC. It's not too common because your plants are, they, they're in water. You know, they need water. So you're not really going to run into overwater and underwater. What you'll run into is lack of oxygen. So obviously when you start off with some seedlings, you got your buckets filled up. They're probably going to be above the net pots because they're at the bottom of the seedling. But as that root comes out, Guess what? Now a lot of that root is underwater, and a lot there's you know it's suffocating, it's drowning. How long can you hold your breath underwater? So you want to expose some of that. So it's kind of like shoulders down, right? You want your shoulders, chest down in the water. Up here, we're good. We could work with that. We could breathe. Same thing with your plants. So you want to have a little as they grow, lower your water level. But what I would suggest doing is once your plants are starting to get some nice roots, go ahead and you know fill the buckets up to where they're just about two inches on the net pots. That's going to allow that top half of the, not top half, but that top portion of the plants to breathe and all that dissolved oxygen and everything that's coming there, you're going to thrive and you're going to do well. Um, now when it comes to being the water too low, watch out for that because if it's too low, uh, your air pump might not be fully submerged so it's no longer providing bubbles. So guess what? You know, there is a lot of space in there, room for oxygen, so your plants may be able to thrive for a little bit, but you need to fill it back up to a point where, you know, the waters and the bubbles and all that is going. Just don't fill it up too high. If you follow all these recommendations, it's going to ensure that you have the proper conditions for your plants to fully thrive and you won't run into any unwanted problems. Well, you'll reduce your chances of running into problems. Problems are always going to happen. Um, just be on your toes and be on the lookout. But as long as you follow those, you know, plenty of oxygen, right temperatures, right water level, right amount of nutrients and all that stuff your plants are going to be fine um that's going to be it for this video thank you for tuning in um on the next video of this series i will be covering episode three and this is where we're going to get into the plant stuff now i know you guys have been waiting we got everything set up we got everything going we got the right conditions well now we want to get some plants in those conditions to thrive and that's what we're going to be talking about next we're going to be talking about germination and seedlings so stay tuned make sure you like comment subscribe turn on the post notification bells and until next time guys peace this video is brought to you with the help of the channel's sponsors Spider Farmer is a familiar name to most home growers and that's due to the countless people that use their products. I'm currently using their SC5000 LED grow light which is a 500 watt light and I'm using that in my 4x4 tent. This light fits perfectly within my tent and offers max light coverage throughout the entire canopy. I'm honestly a huge fan of the Barstall lights and they do it right over at Spider Farmer but the main reason I'm attracted to this light is due to the aesthetic and the accents of the orange that these lights it just caught my eye and it's part of the logo color so I had to go with that. They have a huge variety of LEDs ranging from 30 watts all the way up to 1000 watts. So it's safe to say there's something in there for all growers. If you're interested in checking out any other products, check out the links down below in the description. They'll lead you straight to their website, as well as Spider Farm and being nice enough to give us a discount code. So at checkout, make sure you use code DUSA Farms and earn yourself a discount. Yes, I do earn commission from referrals, but it's only 3%, so it's not a lot. But at the end of the day, any purchase will help out the channel a lot.